All right, as you're finishing that up, um, make sure your name's on it and then bring it up to my capable hands in a second. In a second, no, no pressure, no pressure. Um, we're go uh, Your old quizzes are back. There's a spot in your booklet for them. So it says quiz one in your booklet. Glue it into your booklet where it says quiz one so you can see it. I put a check mark by it if I like it and I'm happy with it. ka -ching. If it was really egregiously bad, but I, but but I under, but you were right, I might have put a minus C if like it was just like awful. I don't know. Um, if the if the communication was awful, but like I'm giving you like big big swings on that. Um, that means it's right. That means I don't like it. And like criterion A is off. If it was really bad, criterion C, I might have done that. But mostly, I'm just trying to get you the idea about criterion A. So finish those up. And we will jump into the next part of this. Can I just like look back at the bus and see? Thank you. Oh, thank you. I want both of us. Thank you. Good to see you. Glad you made it. Afternoon. My brain's a little slow today. My brain's slow every day. Wait, I think I'm going to get it. No, I don't get it. But I think Again, these quizzes are just for you to like see how you're doing on the stuff we did previously. Um, they're just to give you some feedback. Cool. So, uh, first, how was the weekend? What did you guys do? Did you do anything fun? <laughs> Gross, I love it. <laughs> so good. Nice, alright. Other fun things? You did what? Uh, what did you make? <laughs> Just for fun. You're like, I feel bad about life. Baked goods! Yeah, that's pretty much Love it. I know how it goes. You did math? Yeah. Yes. Other fun things? I got my third piercing. You, you got your third piercing? Yeah. Can I? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fun fact, I used to have one too. Back when it was like cool in like eighth grade, like the like guys had to like do the stuff we were getting, I thought it was so cool. Prostitute. I wasn't that cool. Um, good, good. Well, all right. Well, let's try this. Uh, here's the quiz. Uh, I'm gonna just ro roll through it with you right now. No. All right. This is the stuff that we're doing from uh, nine nine C. So it's stuff that I, I think is. Kind of like level four or five for you right now, like stuff that I want to be able to do. Can you factor that? Yeah, you can. Factoring. If you don't know what to do, just build the brackets, and it helps fire your brain up about it. Should give you one of those and one of those, one of those and one of those. Since you see nothing in the middle, it's because the plus and minus three x's cancel each other out, so that should be factored. Similarly, that should be one of those and one of those and one of those and one of those. That gives you the nine x squared. That gives you the sixteen. Opposite signs means that middle section cancels out. No problem. That, ugh, that's gross. But probably, like, well, probably we could make it a little prettier. Because, like, I see, I, like, I know we could, I, we, we could do something like this. Root 3 times x in a bracket and root 3 times x. And that's what I first started wanting to do. But then I went, oh, there's a 3 in that stupid 27 also. And so why don't we just... First, make it a little nicer. Factor the three out. Turns into that and that. And it's just that. And so, really, it's just three sets of this. So. Wait, don't just And then that, oh. I don't know. It's got to be an X and an X. Like, it's got to start like that. The nine's going to be like that and like that. Uh, oh, and then it, it's all plus. So that, that gives us positive 9. 
That gives us three X's, and that's three more X's. Ka-ching! Happy with that. The six X's? Well, we don't really have to ignore it. We, we, we like it. We want it. Um, and let me show you. Let me show you why. If we were to redistribute this, like remultiply this, this gives us this. This, when you multiply those, that gives you x squared. That gives you three x's. That gives you three more x's. Okay. And that gives you nine. So this is just a different form of writing that. So it works. We're not. We're not. Changing it. We're just look, changing how it looks because this is more useful in some cases. Yeah. Cool. Questions about that? Feel like you're fairly confident with it? Good. Um, do you want to see anything from the home learning? Yes. Good. That means you. That means you did it. Sometimes when I hear nothing, it's because you didn't do it. Um, what do you want to see? What do you want to see? Nine C three. Anything from three? Nine C three. Oh yeah, we had that like second. Yeah, a little extra stuff. Nine C three. So the nine C was pretty short, so we uh, we thought you maybe would want some more practice. So we printed some of the harder bits from it, and that looked like this. So here's nine C three. We'll do a couple of them. Yeah. Woo. How do you get the paper? I'm not sure where they are. The second. All right, so let's do let's do uh, A first, just because like I don't like A because it's got a negative right there. It kind of messes with my senses. So what we could do is just like this would look so much nicer if it was all plus, or if at least this first term was not a stupid negative. So let's factor out a negative one outside. It, it means basically divide this by negative one. Right? And then I get an x squared. If I redistributed it, did it, it, I get that negative x squared back. Let's divide this by negative 1, 2. That's factoring it out. Woo! Positive 2 divided by negative 1 gives us negative 2x. Basically, we're just changing all the sides. Is that okay? Yep. So far, like, I just want to make the negative, the first value not be negative. So now I can ignore this negative 1, making it play it by itself. And I can factor that nicely by itself. So that's x and x. That's got to be a 1 and a 1. One way to do this is say plus and plus. That gives me plus 1. Oh, but it doesn't give me negative 2x there. So these guys have to be both negatives. Ping, ping. Cool? I think that'll work. x squared, positive 1, negative x, another negative x, ah, negative 2x's. Shazam! So... Yeah, because this is a positive. There's two ways to multiply to a positive y. Either both positives or both negatives. And since this piece needs to be negative, it makes sense that these should be both negative because they'll multiply to this, but basically they'll add to that. Let's do another one with like this negative business with this one, with C. C is ugly, A, because it has negatives, and B, because it has this 3 right there. Most of the, or some of the times, we can factor out a 3, like that's divisible by 3, that's divisible by 3, that's divisible by 3, and so this makes it a lot nicer. Let's, let's pull out a negative 3. You could do it in two steps and pull out a negative 1, uh, and then pull out a 3. Well, let's just cut to the chase. Divide everything by negative 3. If you want to visualize that, what you could do is go divide by negative 3, divide by negative 3, Divide by negative 3, and that's sort of the mechanics of factoring this out. This leaves you just with x squared, positive 10x, and positive 25. Oh, that's a nice and nice. So if, if you want to check it, this, yes, gives me negative 3x squared back, gives me negative 30x back, gives me negative 75 back. I'm happy with that. So leave the negative 3, and then factor this bad boy. There's x, there's x, got to be 5 and 5, right? 5 and 5, all plus, plus. It's great. What's the smooth way to leave it? Negative 3x plus 5 squared? Yeah, go. Cool. 
bam, right? Because you have two sets of x plus five. So it, it, there's no harm in writing it all out, but just it looks cooler with the square. You can, you can scare more little kids. Cool. All right. Good. Then what we're gonna okay? Our our uh, goal is to be able to do this with things that don't follow this pattern perfectly. And so today's kind of the link up of the two. We're going to be factoring four terms. It looks scary, but it's, it's so that eventually we can factor something like that, right? That doesn't have a perfect square, but it factors nicely. And we'll see how to get from this like shortcut version to here, we're kind of making that link. So thinking of links, try this. Just as a little bit of a warm up. <laughs> What's that? Where was that picture taken? Uh, Lujan in uh, Argentina. Where it's legal to have tigers sitting about. <laughs> Not naturally. Yeah, okay. <laughs> the majestic Argentinian tiger. All right, so you're at a re animal rehabilitation center, obviously, when you're floating through Argentina. Uh, and they're making a temporary, temporary enclosure for a tiger that will bring it back to health before it's released. The enclosure, for some reason, has to be twice as long as its width. And, and I want it to have an area of 72 meters. So I want like the space for the tiger and the handler to be 72 meters. Squared. Um, so let's call this like length and width. What I want you to try to figure out is, could you figure out the dimensions? Like, could you figure out how long this has to be? and how long this has to be to get this to work. Now just see if you can mess with some numbers and see if you can figure it out. If you use too much fencing, your boss is angry because you have to pay for the fencing. And if you use too little fencing, there's a hole in your fence and the tigers eat you, so that's bad too. I'm trying to figure out how to make this work. <laughs> so yeah, so it all links up nicely. <laughs> Draw a square. No, 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 no I just what I she said. said. Oh, I I'm said. When, you, when it wrote too much fencing, cool angry boss, I thought you were implementing the tiger was the angry boss. No, no, no. Tiger doesn't care. Enclosure is like the, the fence, the fenced in area, because it encloses the man eating tiger. My nine goes like down. Like this. That looks like a G. I do my G like that. So like, this is my nine, okay? That's my G, so. My G. Oh, wait, what? So one has to so here's some here's some solutions that you, you could get potentially. Um, if they just said I need 72 to be the area, you could have a really long 72 meter fence and then one meter there, right? That would be like blocks of set. There would be 72 one by one blocks, and the tiger could walk this way and stay there. <laughs> he couldn't like turn around. No room to turn around. If you wanted to give him a little room to turn around, turn around. You can make it, and this is, this has an area of seven, 72, right? So the area here is 72. This is a 36 by, it's half as long, but twice as wide. And so there's still 72 blocks there if you counted them all out. Um, 
And so this still has an area of 72. Uh, tell me about this. What's the perimeter of that one? How much fence do you need? 100 and... Uh, you'd need... 48. No, 148. Don't, don't, don't add for me. Tell, me. tell me what you're adding up in your head. Uh, I'm trying to do 2 times 72 plus 2. Cool, you're going 72 plus 1 plus 72 more plus 1. Cool. Yes. So that's the perimeter. You end up with what? 146. 146? Okay. So the perimeter there, 146. Um, this one, does it have the same perimeter? Uh, no. No. Nah, right? You, it's, it's 36 and a 36. That's 72. And so this is 36, 36. How much is that? Two. Two, and this is? Forty. Two, yes. So this is 70. Oh, I know. Yeah. So this is 76, right? So they both have the same area. If you're going to, like, paint the ground with, like, water sealant because tigers pee a lot, I don't know, um, then, then you'd need this much fencing or you'd need this much fencing, but you'd use the same amount of paint to paint the ground. I took the square root of 72. This is the square root of 72. And I got 8.5. 8.48. And so this, if you'd made eight boxes here and eight boxes here, there's that, that has an area of 72. So this times itself is root, root 72 times itself is 72. And that has the same area, too. What's its perimeter? 30. Yeah, it's like eight and a half, eight and a half, eight and a half, eight and a half. Yeah, 36. Well, same area, all of them, different perimeters. Which one's the least expensive? Middle one. Bottom. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this one's the least expensive to build because you're using less fence. This is the most expensive and most obnoxious for the for the animals, right? They can only move in one line, and then they run in. They're like, oh, "Dang it! Now what?" <laughs> right? um, so those are some different different ways we can do things. Now there was part of this prompt that said they're forcing us to have it twice as wide as it is long. So let's take all that out. P.S. What we just did was some calculus. Ooh. Oh, um, Ooh. Kind of awesome. They said we want this to be two times as long as it is wide. So its width times two is its length. So twice as long as it is what? Two times. Is that right? Did I write it backwards? Yeah. yeah. No, no, no. Wait, what's R? Which what? What's R? R? On, on your little sketching there. Those L's. Nice. We're right. Yeah, Let's do this. Let's do X and Y. We don't really care which one's which. I just want, like, let's call that one needs to be two times as big as that. Right? So I know the area has to be, like, length times width. And I know one of them is X. And the other one, let's call X the short side. Double that, whatever that is. And I know that that area has got to be 72. Right? Uh, so x times 2 times x is 2x squared. That's 72. That's where your equation starts life. And I feel like once you're there, you guys are pretty good. But building that's a little bit challenging. Divide by 2, divide by 2, you get x, is 30, x squared is 36. And now what? Yeah, so take the so take the root of both sides. Now this is like algebra, right? We're just or, the, or arithmetic. We're taking square roots and such. But eventually, we're going to inject things like this that are that don't clean up as nicely, and we want to be able to go from something like this. We want to get rid of this square root by squaring. Oh, sorry, square by square rooting. And so eventually we want to not have things that are addition problems. This is much harder to do when you have like 5 plus 2. It's a lot easier when you have a perfect square because you know this is 6 times 6. It's easy to break up a square when you're dealing with multiplication. It's much easier, it's much harder to do it when you have addition. And so that's what we're doing with all this factoring, is just changing how things look from addition to multiplication 
so we can blast it with some square roots. Yeah, and solve some problems like that. Often we're talking about area and such. So this is the technique. This is the link between what we did last time and what we're going to be doing next time. Um, this is kind of a stepping stone. And it's factory in four terms. I'm going to give you just an overview of what I want you to be able to do at the end of this. And then we'll go through it kind of slow. Okay? So it has four terms, meaning there's four chunks. One, two, three, four. Looks ugly, but what you're going to do in a second is break it into pieces. Ignore this one. Just focus on that one. Say, hey, what's in common? Ah, a two and two x's. Pull it out. Ignore that piece. Say, hey, what's in common? Oh, a three. What's left over? That. If the math gods are kind to you and we have sacrificed enough fourth graders to them, this and this will be, <laughs> those will be the same. And we can say, hey, what's in common in here and here? Oh, the x plus 2. Whoop, you pull it out. You've done that step before. And so what's left over is 2x and 3. Well, what, what, what the first one? It's like, it's 2x times x. Yeah, that's only x squared, not q. Yeah, also, that's what I'm saying. There, that's better. I was like, no, that doesn't work. Cool, that's the general technique. So let's slow her down and try it out. Cool, so at the top of your notes, if you haven't already, you can put that in there. It's so quick. Cool. Pop that in there. There's A's! Yeah, there's A's. It'll be okay. Thanks for the catch, Olivia. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So uh, this is like this is kind of generic. Like we're using A's and things like that. I want you to be able to do this with most problems. Almost everything that you're going to see has been engineered by some evil genius to work out nicely, right? When you get into engineering and things like that, you're not going to have that luxury. It's just going to be like the universe throwing data at you. But there are be there are better techniques to make all of this work. Um, we're just kind of learning the basics and you know, and the algebra behind it. So this could be like a three and a seven. I don't know, but or I guess it would be a three and a three. We don't really know, but we're just going to treat it like this. And I know that A is like a 6, and that's a 6 also. So we would ignore this side for a second. We're going to factor this out. We'll say, what's in common? Well, an A and an X. So let me do it myself. An A and an X. Pull that out of this piece. What's left over there? Uh, an X. And what's left over there? Zero. Yeah, what happens if you leave zero in there? Yeah, exactly. When you redistribute this, you get this back. Ka-ching! And you get... Oh, that's gone, right? So I know that you're pulling out, you're like, nothing left. But you need to leave a placeholder there. The placeholder we call, bing, one. Yay. Yeah? Hello. Because you do have one set of AX. Yeah. Right? If this was like a six, you'd pull it out and you'd say, oh, I have six AXs. You divide by the AX and you have the six left. We have one sitting in front of there. Now play the same game with the second part. Ignore that. And say, oh, I got a two and a two. Pull that out. X and one. The math gods smile upon us because we have sure. this and that as the same piece. We pull them out, right? So we have like an x plus one, AX and then plus what's two. left over? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yes, please. Cool. Good. One thing I All right. Okay. Take that idea. You try these two. Ba bam, ba bam. Uh. Ba bam, ba bam. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. 
Das? Eight. Five. Six. Five. Oh, we're gonna. I mean, we always do an A. I, like A is just like, do you know how to do math? So we'll do an A. I think this one has a D at the end and a and a, and a B. So I think we're gonna do all of them. There's always a C and the A together because it's easy. Um, yeah. So we'll, I think we kind of have all of them on this one. Get excited. Yeah. <clears throat> So we just do negative one out of it. What do you think? Like, no. But wait, give me a second. Yeah, but like later, I'm saying we can put the negative one on the out. You know what I'm saying? Like negative one. Yeah. Later. I'm just trying to plot the plan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it differently than he jumps. <laughs> I know you. You probably put the X's together and the Y's together. I'm gonna do it differently. Uh, I put. The, I put the A's. I pulled the A's first. I said I, I like. I want. I want to deal alphabetically. A's come first. Let's put those first. And then B's. And hey, look, there, there's an A in common in both there. I pulled the A. What's left over is X plus Y. And hey, look, a B in common. Pull the B. Factor out the B. That's criterion C way to say it. What you're left with is, hey, X plus Y and X plus Y. Pull the X plus Y out. What's left over? An A and a B. Did you get anything different than me? No. Right? Which way is better? There's not, like, the way that you don't mess up, the way that makes sense to you. I saw the A's in common first, and that's what I put together. You probably saw the X's in common, because that's what we were focused on before. Did you get anything different? No. Does it matter which one you put first? Yeah. Right? 2 times 3 is the same as 3 times 2. It's the translative property of multiplication. Impress your friends with your vocabulary. It doesn't matter which order you multiply things in. Neat? Similarly, I saw some of you, as you were messing with this, some, one of you got something like this, a x plus y, and b y plus x. Ah, they're in different order! A plus 3 is the same as 3 plus 2. Commutative property of addition. Impress your friends with your vocabulary. How, when, when, and so definitely, I just rewrite this, right? X plus Y. When this does not work is if you had something like that, right? That and that are not the same. Because think about if this was 4 minus 3, that's 1. If, and then switch their places, right? Then this is 3 minus 4, negative 1. Not the same. 
So it, there's no commutative property of subtraction. It's just addition. In fact, your friends. Um, so just be careful with that. Neat? Fine. Okay, so that one looks like that. Uh, and then the second one. What? We pulled out a... Ew. Ah. Ew. Oh, do you move the... Which one? The three? The yeah, we did negative. Yeah. Oh, I like it. Okay, so... You put the negative stuff together. Yeah. That's right. That's why like all the negative people hang out together. I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> all the positive people hang out together. <clears throat> okay, so something like that. I put a plus sign. I injected my own plus sign there. There's that. There's that. How you set this up is your art form. There's a lot of ways you can do this and still get the same answer. Pull out an X, maybe. Shazam. You're left with, what, a 2x and a 3. And maybe pull out a negative, what do they got? A, that's a 2 and a 5, a 3 and a 5, so negative 5. Pull out a negative 5. Left in that 2, oh, amazing. Yeah, right, that gives you that, that gives you that. We're happy with that. Mm -hmm. These are the same, so pull out the 2x, 2x plus 3. Notice it's not like two sets of this come out, right? It's not that, it's not that you have this squared. It's that you have this, and it would distribute into the x. You would do this, and so there you get one of them, and there you get the other one back, right? So I know it's tempting to be like, I got two of them, or I got two of them, or I got two of them. Like, the two comes from the distribution. Settle down. So, I, I think I like that. Does that work? I guess I can You got something different? Okay. Yeah. Does it uh, redistribute it and see if it works? Redistribute. Cool. Are you feeling confident? Do you want one more or do you want to jump to homework? Homework. Vamos! Ba boom, ba boom. Uh, 9D. It's not super long, so I assume that you can get done with that and then finish up anything else. Good. Do you have a sharpener? Because I'm in need of...